Hello, hello, it's me again, the Metaverse Explorer, back again with another episode of Grape Solana Alpha. This episode is a slightly big one. We have a Hubble tutorial for you. We're going to look at the wormhole uh, hack, the exploit, and the actual report that's been released after it. If you missed it, the $300 million has been stolen from the wormhole, and they haven't returned it yet. Solana, Riptide Hackathon, it's uh, on now. Let's see who some of the people are in it. The Solana Grapevine has recently said they might be ceasing operations, which is crazy. Site Options has just acquired Tap Finance. Lux AI is a new metaverse that's minting and it's pretty hyped up. Uh, Dot Shade, there is a new demo. Shout out to Barn Dog who gave me this footage and it looks pretty sick. I want to play it myself. Uh, Solana Pay plus Circle plus FTX all partnering together to bring payments onto Solana, which is crazy. This is like the next wave of adoption. After that, we look at Solens Isolated Pools where you can uh, collateralize up to 90% and get 90% LTV, which is crazy. That means high liquidation risk better be ready and then after that we look at phantom on mobile the new release that just came out a couple days ago and the current nft landscape on solana thank you very much for watching let's go hey there if you're new here i'm the metaverse explorer and i provide you with the most up-to-date solana specific content and alpha to increase the size of your portfolio all totally free all you got to do is click that little bell and that little icon I get my sources from three different places. The Grape Solana Discord channel, join us, have a chat to me. The Solana Grapevine, a daily newsletter providing the best source of information regarding new protocols, rewards. It's a group of passionate people that carefully curate new announcements, new projects to discover and actionable intel for you to experience yourself. You can get the link to this down below. And of course, the Solana Foundation and the ecosystem. Let's get to this episode. And thank you for coming back. We have Hubble tutorial first up. So Hubble lets you supercharge your liquidity on Solana. You can mint a stable coin at 0% interest rate against multiple collateral types. Before we go in, let's actually have a look at their documentation. Uh, this is Hubble. You can go over there. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it as well. And don't mind my big head in the way. Um, so what can you actually do? You can use your Solana, BTC, ETH and others to borrow up to 90.9% LTV in their own stablecoin called USDH, USD Hubble. While borrowing, users can earn yield on, yield on their deposits. Uh, what can you do with USDH? Uh, at the moment, you can deposit it in a stability pool, which gives you about 80% uh, APY, which is pretty crazy for a stablecoin. Um, so what can you actually do with it? Uh, one time borrow uh, minting fee of 0.5%. So if you mint or um, if you use collateral up to 90%, you have to you, you have to pay a minting fee of 0.5%, which is super high when you look at all the giant uh, um, the, what the LTV is at the moment, actually what the what the TVL is at the moment. It's pretty high. Borrow USDH, a 100% uh, decentralized stablecoin. We'll see about that. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of UXD, which is pretty cool. And, and you can earn yield on your collateral. Of course, there is a HBB token. HBB token, here we go. Now, um, the pre-seed round is 0 0.3 million, which was, uh, where are we? Where are we? Oh, I might have come from the token sale, the 30% here. Um, either way, the total supply of the HBB token is 100 million. This is what I really don't like, guys. Uh, have a look at this. The... Token sale has been 30 million so far. The pre-seed price for the Hubble protocol was 0 0.07. So some VC investors out there were able to buy this for 0 0.07. Now, what's the public sale where me and you watching this video on YouTube, how much do we get to pay for this Hubble, Hubble um, token? $1. So someone could buy this for nearly five cents and we're paying $1 for it. And they have, look at this, the pre-seed and seed sale, 0% at TGE, which is the vesting schedule. Nothing is vested there. Uh, one, me, uh, one month cliff with 15% unlock, linear vesting for 12 months. In when this starts, they'll be able to realize their profits of what, 93, well, no, no, 70x. Wait, what? Let me, let me just work this out so we can see. So what are we doing? We're doing uh, uh, $1 divided by 0 0.07. 14x as soon as as soon as they go to public sale they have actually realized a 14x uh, on their investment which is crazy 
But either way, let's have a look at the protocol. So here it is. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Log in on the top right hand side corner. Um, my head, I'm going to zoom down. So let's say you have Solana. I want to uh, use one Solana. And what uh, ratio, learn to value ratio do you want? You can go to 50. They do have a soft limit, which is about 60 something, 60%. And then 86 is about a near liquidation system, um, near liquidation amounts. So let's say you want to just borrow 50 USDH uh, using one Solana, which means that I'm depositing $115. Okay, my bor I'm borrowing $50.18 in USDH. My fee of 0.5% is 25 cents. My LTV is um, uh, 43%. Uh, and my liquidation price. I am going to get liquidated if Solana has a minus 50% retracement, which is very hard to happen, but it can happen. All right. While, you, you, while your Solana is in here, you'll, you'll be getting some APY as well, but none, nothing's happening at the moment. What can you do with your USDH once you mint it? Um, you can go to the dashboard here, um, and it's not coming up because I haven't actually minted anything. Um, the stability pool is something that is super cool, which I want to show you right now. It's taking a while to load. All right, this is, the, uh, this is the dashboard. You'll be able to see any loans that you have yourself. The stability pool, here is where it gets interesting. You can deposit your USDH, and let's find out what it does. To earn liquidation rewards and HBP emissions. When liquidations occur, you will earn all the collateral of the liquidated users in exchange for of paying their debt. And of course, you use USDH to pay their debt. When you deposit USDH, you get 83.4% APY, which is incredible. That's a really high number. Now, where does this come from? This probably comes from the liquidated tokens that you get, which are here. Sol, ETH, BTC, FTT, Ray, Serum, MSOL. And you'll also be getting some HPB token rewards. Um, that's about it, really. Uh, let's go to staking. This is where you can stake your HBB. You, uh, rewards come from the fees of the users taking the loans. This is that 0.25% fee. You mint USDH again, uh, deposit it in Sabre to earn HBB and bring it on to earn more rewards. So this is basically the, 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 the normal liquidity mining over at Sabre protocol. No problem. Let's look at a few stats and we'll look at liquidations as well. Um, so the stats, total value locked is 33 million at the moment. Deposited collateral is 21 million, not a problem. How much HVB is staked? Half a million dollars. A stability pool has $11,000 in it. Oh, sorry, 11 million. Not, not bad. That's not a bad amount. How much revenue has actually been generated? 67,000. That's pretty good. This is revenue generating protocol already. So I'm super excited for this. I'm going to leave the documents for you down here below. They explain to you all the different uses uh, and what you need to know in here. I'm, I was trying to find the team, but I couldn't easily find it, which worries me. I always, because, you know, when we when we use these new protocols, anyone can make a protocol. Anyone, an Anon guy can make a GitHub repository, no problem. We need to find out the team behind them. The team is who you invest in, because if the team can, you know, make this protocol, they can make it a lot better. The, the, it's just, I just feel much safer when there's a team behind. All right, we'll move on to the wormhole exploit and the report. All right, we're on the Twitter and about 11 hours ago, they did recently release the incident report. Uh, let's have a look at it and see what actually happened. This is it. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. On February, 20, on February 2nd, 2022, um, an attacker exploited a signature verification ver variability, vulnerability in the wormhole network to mint 120k wormhole wrapped ether. Note, wormhole wrapped, not solid wrapped. There's a difference. There's two kinds. Um, these tokens were not backed by ether deposits on the Ethereum side of the portal bridge. The attacker then bridged 93,750 of these tokens to Ethereum, withdrawing the unwrapped ether from the contract, which is crazy. Now, let's see what actually happened. Let's go through the report uh, very, very uh, uh, quickly and get an idea of what happened. So Jump Crypto has since recapitalized the contract to ensure that all the Ether on every chain is fully backed. So everything's kosher for now, but we need to find out what happened. The wormhole is back online and fully operational. A $10 million reward is offered for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of the responsible uh, wormhole hacker. 
Uh, it's actually open at the moment. They haven't found him. And this was a blockchain kind of message they sent to the hacker. They say, you bring it all back. You bring all the money back. We're going to give you $10 million and offer you like a white hat contract. So, you know, we, we acknowledge that you're smart. You're able to do this. Good on you, man. Come and work for us. This is Web3, you know. You need to recruit the really smart guys. Um, okay, let's cut to it. So timeline response, 1824, the uh, exploit, the unidentified attacker exploited a vulnerability in the Solana side wormhole contract. Um, so uh, there is a bit of confusion. Everyone says, everyone's blaming each other previously, but this was a contract bug. It wasn't like a, a platform bug or anything. This was actually just in the code, okay? Um, 1907, uh, wormhole network contributors noticed a discrepancy in the outstanding funds. Uh, 1910, uh, identified the wormhole vulnerability, declared an incident, and a war room conference call. 1933, contributors alerted the, to the guardians to the possible exploit and asked them to stop relaying messages to pause any further token transfers across the network. 1940, uh, token transfers paused when a super minority of six nodes stopped relaying. Uh, 40, two teams started working in parallel to close the vulnerability focused on two different approaches. 55, the bug was conclusively verified by internal peer review. The team circulated a contract upgrade governance proposal for governance to vote on. And uh, 2014, the plan was agreed to by guardians on how to safely bring their nodes back online. 15, uh, was made to communicate with the hacker, which is the, um, the, the, the blockchain transaction message that they sent. You know, give us back all of it and you'll get $10 million plus a white hat agreement. Awesome. The attacker has not responded at this time of writing. Crazy, right? Okay, what happened next? Uh, 2207, Neodyme team, uh, they had a plan uh, to upgrade using the exploit, succeeded in building and testing a working prototype. Second tweet was sent by Wormhole uh, at 25. 33, vulnerability was fixed at 32. 0032, midnight. Uh, governance reached a consensus and the upgrade was executed on Solana. Consensus was reached on starting the network back up. Uh, jump, cap, jump Crypto replenished a contract with 120k ETH. And let's go all the way down. Okay, now let's look at the vulnerabilities. What happened? Here is the vulnerability summed up for you. The root cause of the exploit was a bug in the signature verification code of the core wormhole contract on Solana. This bug allowed the attacker to forge a message from the guardians to mint wormhole wrapped ether. I kind of get it, but I'm not a developer. If they say whatever a guardian is, I might understand it. Um, but yeah, the, even a signature verification code. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. But this this seems to be a well thought out message, so I'm I'm good. I'm good for now. Um, let's read uh, some rumors that they said. Um, they say yeah, it was this, it was that, but uh, people knew about it before. No, not really. It was a byproduct of something else. Um, they talk about audits as well. So Kudelski uh, is doing an audit in the third week of January, uh, which. Uh, Sorry, kicked off an audit in the third week of January. Neodyne uh, is going to be contracted to perform ongoing audits. Trail of Bits has been contracted to perform two audits in 2022. The security roadmap, accounting mechanisms to isolate risks to individual chains, uh, dynamic risk management, and ongoing monitoring and early detection of incidents. And the bug bounty is still up and going. Immune Fi, 3.5 million, believed to be the highest in the industry. So... Thinking of multi-chain and token bridges, these are very important. We need this uh, core infrastructure for us to be able to experience Web3 to the way that we want. We have to we have to make sure that there's security in place and that these things don't happen. These things are going to happen because we're all still experimenting. Every new token, every new like bridge, every contract is an experimentation. And it just takes someone to come and think outside the box, someone to see a code that's not right, and he can exploit it. And where there's a will, there is a way. Where there's money, people will come. Um, so I, just, I don't have much to say about this. I have still 100% faith in the Solana ecosystem, in the in the Solana dev team, and just the, the dApps being built on top of here. I can see that the, the developers are all running across coming to Solana, and I have no doubt nothing has changed. People are still going to use Wormhole after this. Um, all the funds are secured. They'll just be a bit more cautious. The new Solana hackathon has officially started. It is February 2nd to March 19th. I am participating in this one. 
I can't do much. I can make videos. That's about it. I can't develop anything. Let's look at some of the ideas of what might come out from it. So we've got a payments rail. So loyalty programs, on-chain points programs, collateral pay as an afterpay in Australia. So you buy now and then you pay for it like in installments or something. And maybe think about it while you're giving installments, your money is earning interest for you. So it actually reduces the price on it, which is cool, which needs fixed rate interest uh, deposits. So all of this side of Lego blocks that we're building on Solana. NFT rewards, NFT coupons. There's a whole idea on DAOs. Uh, Anatoly had a little DAO call not long ago. Uh, DeFi, they need fixed rates of loans, no loss lottery. Bring me pool together. I need pool together on Solana. We had Sol Lotto, but nothing really happened there. Um, we need volatility index products. We need index funds. Yes, please. I'm a passive investor. Uh, insurance, generalized insurance protocol, serum analytics tool. On Web3, they need subscriptions, Solana App Store, a smart contract wallet. Uh, on-chain royalty splits, you know, so in case, you know, you do a, you do a collaboration with another artist. So all the, all the different uh, royalties go to different wallets, all this sort of stuff. Um, data infrastructure, they need uh, a type chain, uh, build a protocol that creates one or more value capture mechanisms, uh, open Zeppelin and Circum for Solana. There are a few people on here. Let's find, let's see if we can find some people and if we can notice anyone in the team. All right, so that's me at the moment. That's actually at the top, which is awesome. I've labeled myself an independent Solana YouTuber and content creator. You can see, I'm going to scroll down. How many actually people? 303 matching your query. I don't really have a query, but I just want to see everyone else. Nice. Look at all these guys. Oh, there's someone with an NFT in Solana. I'm sure there'll be some monkey DAO people in here, some some shadowy super colders, perhaps, some tungsten cube people. This is crazy. This is cool. I like hackathons. You get to meet all these new people. If you're watching this and you you have your own protocol, come to me. Let's do an interview. Let's find out about you, your you yourself, your team, your product on Solana, because I really want to find out what you do and what you, what you want to do in Solana and what's missing, what do we really need here. If anything, we'll have a good conversation about it. Now, there is some sad news coming out of the Solana Grapevine. If you didn't know, the Solana Grapevine is a daily newsletter that curates all the tweets, all the information in Solana and sends it as an email to you. And it's in really good. It's invaluable sometimes. Like it keeps you up to date on all the new pools, all of the new stuff that's happening in Solana. What do they say? While our daily newsletter is short and concise, it takes an incredible amount of manpower to chronologically scroll through our entire Twitter feed and curate a list of only the most relevant tweets every single day. We are prou proud of what we produce and know that we have many readers who rely on the grapevine to get their daily dose of Solana news. Unfortunately, our team has found it difficult to find sufficient funding for the network uh, for the work we put into creating our products. And we are sad to have to announce that the Solana Grapevine will be going on an indefinite hiatus. If you would like to see the Grapevine continue and would like to support us, our DMs are open. Now, you can uh, donate to the Solana Grapevine um, if you want to help these guys out. They are pretty cool. I know the main guy who runs it. He's nice as well. So just reach out. Uh, there is a possibility they might be able to salvage this. Uh, pivot it into another form of content or something uh, uh, less manpower intensive, maybe automate it somehow. But entirely, this is a business. If the business doesn't remain profitable for a long period of time, you don't have enough runway, you don't have enough time, resources to commit to this, the project dies. That's unfortunately business. So that's um, that's why I try and be uh, a bit more sustainable where I can you know, do a video, a Solana video, maybe once a week um, so that I don't try and burn myself out. Um, but at the same time, you know, th this is this is business. This is what happens. All right, let's move on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it started. Site Options has now acquired Tap Finance. What does this actually mean generally? So these lo these are great um, uh, projects that have had a successful IEOs or IDOs who are sitting on a ton of cash are able to actually capitalize on this and buy out smaller pro smaller protocols that are able to come under their umbrella and be able to just help their entire ecosystem blossom. So what does this actually look like? Uh, so we have the normal site options, which is kind of an American style uh, options platform. Now, what they're saying is they want to be able to offer their uh, participants, their DAO owners, people who own the site token, um, 
they're able to earn even through bear markets or not just bull markets. And what does this look like? Well, the type finance is just going to be coming under their umbrella and it's under their website. It's app.sci-fi.io. And basically you can put your USD here and earn some uh, uh, yield from this. BTC covered call vaults. It generates a yield by running an automated BTC covered call selling strategy. And they have ETH, FIDA, USDT, uh, PUT and PI. Now, Type Finance is unique because they are the only guys who offer a Pi put BTC vault. They're the only ones that actually offer a Pi uh, uh, vault. Uh, and they give some little explanations why. Um, so while the IU process was underway, we were looking on bringing more value to the SIDEL, the surrounding ecosystem and its community. Our mission has been and it will continue to be uh, becoming the de facto on-chain financial services platform for DeFi users across this. Uh, our users will need a way to earn sustainable yield that does not rely on the token emissions, but through bull and bear markets. Now, they give a reason why they chose Tap Finance and what this brings to the side DAO and the ecosystem. Uh, it's uh, access to sustainable yield under one roof, which is pretty cool. I like having everything ever under one roof. What's what's what can you expect as part of the acquisition? Tap will rebrand to Sci Finance to Sci Sci Fi. Ah, I forget how to say it now. Um, this won't impact users. Rebrand is cosmetic only, just a logo change. Um, there will be a version 2 uh, architecture that will take advantage of Psy Options tokenized Euros architecture. I'm excited to see this because this sets a precedent for other protocols who are really cashed up, who's got some nice VC backers to go ahead and acquire some of these smaller protocols. And guess what? When these smaller protocols are bought, man, do they start blossoming because now they have the backing of a bigger daddy behind them. I'm excited for this. I want to see where it goes. Um, personally, I haven't used Type Finance. I use Katana. They won the grand championship of the last Solana hackathon. And I use the other one as well by uh, uh, Friction, by, uh, by I think Ship Capital. Now, there has been a metaverse called Lux AI or Lux VR Metaverse. They recently had a launch on Solana and they have been pretty successful, to be honest. They got 50,000 followers on uh, Twitter, Soul Big Brain, Solana Grapevine, and a few others. This is kind of what it looks like, um, but basically it's a VR and people have been actually people have been actually been able to see it work in VR and you can see your own room in VR, which is pretty good. This is a step above all others. What recently happened, they had a mint on Magic Eden. This has been their Lux uh, real estate mint. You got cards and then you get to have your own uh, apartment or shop or mansion. We've seen lots of the popular um, kind of uh, ecosystems or popular NFT uh, communities get mansions in the Lux VR metaverse. They had a pre-sale whitelist with, 100 and, uh, with 911 participants. They all got their tokens. And then a pre-sale of 7,250 whitelists who could mint one token. But guess what? There were only 5,000 5, NFT mints. So the first batch of people took out 1,000 and then there was 4,000 left. And then the last 7,000 people had to fight for the 4,000 that was left. And when it came to public mint, no one could get one. There was nothing left for the public, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to see what these guys bring. There are a few videos that you can see. People keep sharing all their Lux videos. It keeps going crazy on Twitter. You know, people keep sharing it. I want to try and show you the actual, uh, this is one of, this is someone that's got a, a mansion. No, that's not a mansion. That's a normal one. It's just transparent. Um, yeah, anyway, the, the team is pretty good. I'm going to stop here so you can see the, 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 the timeline that they want to provide. And there do have a few things in progress. So, uh, alpha demo launch. Now what's happened, I've actually gone into this, uh, metaverse in virtual reality with my Oculus headset and it looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. I haven't minted one myself, but I would like to get one. I'm always a secondary market, uh, Kind of picker upper. I don't like to gamble on what's going to be hype. I just need to know that someone is something is hyped, and then I wait till there's a lull where no one cares about it anymore, and then I grab one for myself. All right, now this section is dedicated to Barn Dog. He brought this to my attention. It's called Dot Shade. They are kind of a uh, VR, uh, not VR. Sorry, they're a racetrack game. Uh, they do have an NFT coming up soon. We don't know when, but they joined Twitter in November 2021. Let's do a small deep dive. Can you call it a small deep dive? Not really. They've got 1.1K followers. Uh, let's have a look at their website. This is it. Very minimalistic. They've got their Eve, which is their NFT minting coming very soon. They've got a beta where, where they tell you a little bit about it. Uh, is a game, uh, the race dot shade game beta will be available to play very soon. Keep your eye on the Twitter for the exact date. 
And this is just the little uh, uh, little racetrack that they have. What about their team? They have Eberol, Andy, CTZen, uh, Gene.gif, and .dev. Now, all these guys, the only major one that we see who's actually sporting .shade is Eberol.shade. And he's not followed by anyone, so Barton Dog should probably start following him. Um, he is a designer at Magic Eden NFT, which is pretty interesting. I wonder if he's on the core team. Uh, then we have some two others, uh, Andy Froggy and CT Zen. Andy Froggy, they are part of the Fre Friendly Frog SC, uh, another NFT community group. So these guys must be working together. He's from the uh, Magic Frond FT as well. And then we have Gene, uh, who doesn't really do much. 11 followers, not much here. Um, let's have a look at actual gameplay, which is interesting. We have a game on Solana with gameplay. Let's see it. Now, from my perspective, this is awesome. This is clean. This is super clean. I would play this with my friends. Yeah, man. I'm into it. It just looks so clean. And minimalistic, you know. You can have all these cards as NFTs. You can have you know, an NFT with boosters. That would be pretty cool. You can see the physics are quite nice, but this might turn some people off with how fast it's moving. But fuck it. When Web3, we're going fast. Ah, uh, yeah, it's it's just very clean. It's I love clean games. I I'm an advocate of this. I'm gonna be watching these guys very closely. So that's just some gameplay for you. Um, it's not bad. You can find this online. Nice. You can see this. It got some race times. Very cleanly done. That's about it. Let's move on. February 2nd, Solana has recently announced Solana Pay, which is a new kind of payments uh, infrastructure for, for us to work with. Um, this is super crazy because it started taking off. This is even on Reddit where 12 hours ago, there has been a pharmacist somewhere in the world who has been able to integrate this into his um, own website. And basically it just shows you when you go and check out, I'm gonna click on this so you can see, when you go and check out all your drugs, which is buying Lantus Solstar Pen, which is a diabetes medication, um, he, instead of checking out, uh, even though, not within a coupon, but, um, ah, he had welcome 20 removed from the order. Uh, anyway, uh, he had, uh, he could check out normally, but now he can check out with Solana Pay. So what does this actually do? This allows people to pay using, um, uh, FT, using either through FTX or through using Phantom wallets or using USDC, which is crazy, which is crazy. Everyone already has USDC. So if you have USDC, you can just go and buy whatever you need right away. You don't have to go to a third party who charges you a fee for it. You just pay the correct amount of USDC to that merchant. You can use this through Phantom wallet, which is the probably the, the better Phantom, uh, the better mobile wallet um, in, the, in Solana at the moment. Um, and of course, they just launched with their mobile pay, which is even better, their, their mobile uh, interface, which is even better. And then of course, this also integrates with FTX Pay, which has been uh, been around for a while, but has been silent for a long time. So what does this actually mean? You have the, pe the people providing the infrastructure behind it, which is FTX, and then you have the people providing the wallet service behind it, and then you have people providing the funds behind it. What are you using to pay, which is USDC? This makes me think that USDC is going to go crazy on Solana. This circle has chosen uh, Solana to be the, the main chain of USDC for payments and infrastructure and payment rails. Ah, it's getting exciting, getting very excited. Now we are on Solend. They introduced their Turbo Sol pool or their turbocharged uh, high uh, LTV pool or uh, um, and also their curved pool, not really curved, sorry, I'm making that up. They call it the C token, uh, which is, uh, you know, I wanna say curved. Um, anyway, this is their uh, Turbo Soul. So basically, you can have an LTV of 90% on your assets and collateralize them and borrow against them. So we have Solana here. You can deposit Solana, uh, borrow up to 90%, uh, uh, use it, and then the borrowing APY is 4.7%, which is not bad, to be honest. Um, USDC, uh, you can collateralize that and borrow at 6%, which is not bad as well. What I'm really interested this time is the C tokens. 
What is a Solana, a Sol and C token? It is basically like a curve token. It accrues, uh, it's an interest bearing token. The way it works is that on the normal dashboard here, you're able to deposit whatever asset you have. Let's say USDC. You deposit USDC, it's already earning 5.1%. If you want, you can use that as collateral and borrow something against it. No problem, that's up to you. That's what you wanna do. But for now, if you, borrow, if you deposit that USDC and it's 5.51%, that now you can do that as a C token or a C USDC. So we can see here, this is just at the top. You click C tokens and you mint a C token. Um, mint and use C tokens while earning interest. The way this works is that your C tokens are automatically accruing interest in your wallet, which is pretty cool. Now, what does that actually mean? So let's say you want to transfer your USDC to C USDC. That automatically generates you a 5.51 APY, and that is held in your wallet, which is awesome, instead of being held on the, on the Solan uh, platform. What is the max borrow APY? 50%. Uh, target borrowing APY is 8%. What's the utilization? 80% and the current asset uh, utilization is 72%. Um, so it's pretty cool. I want to show you how to do this, um, but yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Why not? I'll do 100. Um, I want to transfer 100 USDC to interest bearing Solend C USDC. Don't get this confused with curve tokens, even though they are kind of like interest bearing in the same way. But I want to mint 96.94 C USDC. Go ahead. Means that now don't forget there will be an account creation fee and i want to see how much that's going to be oh no account creation fee well probably because i've already deposited into the um into the um the contract for for uh in here at 5.51 percent i already used this all right so i was going to talk about the uh phantom on mobile but basically it's phantom on mobile i don't know what else you need to say it's working people aren't complaining about it so it must be doing its job so well done we have a nice uh, kind of really nice interface uh, for solana on your mobile so we'll be able to get a lot of the kind of c region people and a lot of south american people in it where the mobile economies are much much larger so this just this brings way more people onto solana and helps with the mobile payment rails we we're talking about before before we end it let's look at the nft landscape in solana at the moment this is using solana floor and solan solar analysis um, let's look at the volumes. The seven day volumes have been 1 million soul, which has been pretty impressive. One hour volume, 4,000 soul. What is the current rankings of all the Solana NFTs? So we'll look at Solana floor first. We have uh, SSC, the Shadow Supercoders, Solana Monkey Business, Dijon Ape, Portals, Boriaku, Orori, Tayo, and Stoned Ape Crew, and then Thudbirds. We'll have a look at Solar Analysis. Our market cap for NFTs in Solana is $1 billion. $1 billion! <laughs> Shadowy Supercode is still at the top, though they are losing volume. There's not much of them actually on the market. There's about 30 or so on the market. And there's, a, and there's like 10,000 of them, which is crazy. 50 something on the market and there's, only, and there's 10 thousand of them that's incredible solana monkey business uh degen ape portals basis markets boriaku orori stoned ape tayo robotics space runners boogie mindfolk these guys apparently are very unique i want to find out more about them um so not much else i'm not expecting any new mints uh the lux ai metaverse was the uh, kind of newest hype mint on solana i don't know what the next newest hype mint is if you know what it is leave a comment down below for us so we can all find out about it thank you very much for watching i appreciate your viewership as always i will see you very soon i'm going to be making a star atlas video right after this thank you very much ciao